Welcome to North Hollywood Church of Religious Science Sunday service. My name is Dean Regan. I'm a practitioner here at NHCRS, and welcome to you all. I, I was feeling extra playful today, so I thought I would surrender into the bliss of my Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Let's start off our service today with the lovely and talented Mary Hyland and Sam Krieger, who is also lovely and talented. We are the harvest. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we see. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. Oh, I am that I am. Oh, I am that I am. We 
ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. Oh, I Blessings, blessings, thank you. And let us open up our service with our invocation. So if you would please center yourself in your home sanctuary, take a deep breath, and recognize that source which is ever present, that unity, that love, that consciousness, that brilliance, that energy which is all things unfolding, and I call that somethingness God. I feel right here and right now aligned with, unified with, excited by, expressing that beautiful intelligence that is God. And so I speak this word for our time together in sanctuary, knowing that this time is blessed, that each and every one of us is fully blessed wherever we are in this beautiful sanctuary giving service, at our homes, wherever we are taking in this blessed time. I know that each person is blessed. The digital media team, our musicians, everyone at home, our beloved ministers, each of us expressing that full and complete alignment that is spirit, that is gratitude, that is forgiveness, that is bliss. I recognize that today our perfect message is being spoken by our perfect Reverend Mark LaPonce, knowing that he is blessed, the word he speaks is blessed, and that word lands, settles, embraces in each one of us in just the most blessed and beloved way in, in and throughout our entire community. I hold this true as we awaken to the perfection of this spiritual practice of service, the perfection of the words spoken, the perfection of all beings everywhere, here in our sanctuary, in our city, in our country, in our world. And I give thanks for this knowing. I celebrate this truth. And I release this word knowing that it is done, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Let us continue in celebration with the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you Yes. 
face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in in your home sanctuary join in the Lord's prayer knowing that somewhere throughout this world others are raising their voices in this exact same prayer feeling that connection and that unity let's say the Lord's prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's join in our congregational song, Surely the Presence. <laughs> Surely the presence of love is in this place. I can feel its mighty power and its grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of love is in this place. Surely Thank you. Now, of course, it is time to spend a few moments in sacred meditation. So, in your home sanctuary, please allow yourself to become comfortable, and we will launch into this sacred time. Invite you to hold in this meditation the word God is the love that I am God is the love that I am
breathing in, God is the love that I am. Breathing out, God is the love that I am. Island. That was lovely. But good morning. So I wanted to look at this idea of surrender into bliss. And I added that second part because I have a feeling that if I just threw out the word surrender, I wouldn't be getting a whole lot of yay <laughs> responses. I think for many, the word surrender really has a lot of negative connotations to it. And there's probably good reason for that. I looked at the online dictionary, dictionary definition of surrender. And the dictionary says it means to cease resistance to an enemy or opponent and submit to their authority. Oh, joy. Can't wait. <laughs> Yet every spiritual tradition, including ours, has some theme about the importance and value of us being willing to surrender our human will. Now, in some cases, it's suggested that we should surrender all desire, 
all expectations of happiness here on earth, just be willing to be miserable and suffer throughout this lifetime for some big payoff in the next life. And in Signs of Mind, in our teaching, we would respond to that by saying, nah, uh <laughs> no way. We promote the practice of surrender as a means to experience greater happiness and fulfillment in the here and the now. That we're not about waiting for the afterlife, that God is with us now and God is with us and in us and around us beyond our human experience. But at each moment, we are here to experience and express God's nature. So one idea of surrender that we offer is surrender those limited thoughts of how the good, the greater dreams, that greater love experience, that greater experience of fulfillment in career, that greater financial well-being, that greater health, whatever, that that just isn't possible for us, that for some reason there isn't enough, I'm not enough, you know, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm this or I'm not that. We just say to absolutely be willing to surrender those limiting thoughts and beliefs. And when we do, when we do, it's amazing the good that we can manifest that is exactly what our hearts desired, but that we kept telling ourselves, oh, it would be wonderful, but I can never have an experience like that for whatever reason. So there's that version of surrender. But we also profess that sometimes we need to surrender our ideas of that greater good looking like this. Our attachment to the outcome, our desire to control everything so that it turns out a certain way. Sometimes we need to be willing to surrender those kinds of thoughts and beliefs. So here you have it. On the one hand, surrender those limiting ideas and the good that you seek is yours for the taking. And on this side, I would say this one is like, yeah, let's do that. And then you have surrender your ideas of what that good has to look like. Surrender your attachment to outcomes. Surrender your need to control. Not quite so popular. <laughs> and yet the second one, surrendering control, is incredibly important for us to be moved into greater experiences of good, into the experiences of bliss that our souls seek. And I repeat, we're surrendering to be moved into greater experiences of good, of bliss that our souls seek. The reason we tend to resist the whole idea of surrender, giving up control in terms of trying to make things turn out a certain way, is that on some level, we fear that it will ultimately result in some form of suffering, some form of us being denied the greater good that we seek. You know, in our spiritual, um, pardon me, in our practical mysticism class, that I'm teaching right now. We're studying a book, uh, Entering the Castle, by Carolyn Mace. And on this topic of surrender, she states that surrender is the ultimate test of the human experience. What are we actually surrendering to? And that is the key question. I might rephrase it to say, what do you think you're actually surrendering to. Because remember, spiritual surrender involves surrendering to a power, a presence that we call God, that is only for the good of all without exception. Now, Eckhart Tolle uh, tells us that surrender is a simple but profound wisdom of yielding to rather than opposing the flow of life. And remember, the flow of life is for good. Metaphysical author Mark Nepo also states, surrender is like a fish finding the current and going with it. Again, the current is God's nature. 
as only for goodness, for wholeness, for bliss. See, as much as we talk about that God is only for good and that God is in and around all of us at all times, there's still a tendency for us to project our human personality flaws, our human frailties upon God. And see, while we haven't humanly involved, evolved to the point of knowing our oneness with God, sensing our oneness with everything and everyone, because of that, we don't necessarily have each other's best interests at heart. But God, the ultimate power, the ultimate highest self of all of us, is only for the good of all. So to me, surrender to God is about having the humility, having the humility to recognize that as finite expressions of the infinite, we don't know and see everything. We don't always see the bigger picture. We don't see all the possibilities. We are limited by our own level of consciousness. That can be expanded. Surrender to God is being able to say, this is how I imagine my greater good manifesting, but I can't see it all. I don't know the totality of what's going on here, or what the possibilities are for me. But I am open to the infinite intelligence, the infinite love of which I am a part to show me the way. It's absolutely critical that in our hearts, we know that God's only impulse is for the good of all at nobody's expense, including ours. You know, if you think about it, we're all part of God. We're all expressions of God. God would only want to experience his nature in all parts of itself. God wouldn't want part of itself to suffer. God, unconditional love, unconditional boundless joy and beauty and wholeness and every form of good there is, would only want all those qualities of itself to be expressed in all parts of itself. So surrendering our idea, <clears throat> excuse me, of what we want for something that we can't yet conceive can be a bit scary, right? It can even be painful when we're in the mode of surrendering and seeing things breaking down and we don't yet see the greater possibilities. You know, there's that old idea that we sometimes cling to familiar hell rather than accepting unfamiliar heaven. At least we know this. <clears throat> but sensing that it's ultimately for our greater good to surrender, that provides us with the inspiration. It provides us with the strength to do so and to move forward. And so I think we need to regularly remind ourselves that God, life, is always for me and never against me. That power and presence that animates all creation is always for me and never against me. And follow up by, you know, looking at examples of that. Look out at nature. You don't even have to be in the woods. Just as you're driving around, look at every plant form out there and how it is, you know, just programmed to thrive how plants just automatically reorient themselves toward the light to survive. There's a power and intelligence that takes the food we eat and makes this physical body. Every breath that we breathe reshapes the life that we are living. Just contemplate the magnificence of that, how great it is, and that gives us a sense of that impulse of God only being for good, and that if we open to it more, it will show us the way into a greater good when it's not showing up in the way we expect it. And one of my greatest life lessons around this was when my mom had a stroke that basically left her incapacitated, in a wheelchair, uh, with expressive aphasia, unable to live on her own. And after a stroke, we realized she's not going to be able to go back to any kind of life like what she had. And yet her financial situation 
and ours collectively, my siblings and I, was not one in which we could easily put her into a boarding care facility, and she really didn't want to be a burden to her children and be living with one of us. And so, of course, I did my work, and I kept affirming in consciousness that the place for her that would be cozy, where she could live with a sense of warmth and love and caring and especially dignity, that that was there for her. And I would visit these absolutely lovely places. And as much as I thought, oh, she would just love this. It's just the kind of place she would fix up in this way for herself. <clears throat> Excuse me. I kept looking and seeing, well, completely unaffordable. But I kept affirming something was going to happen. The money was going to show up. One of the places would say, we'll give you 75% off. Something like that. In God, all things are possible. I kept feeling it was possible. But something wasn't manifesting the way I envisioned it. And then one day on the way to the gym, I saw this blade of grass that was poking through the cement. And I looked at that. I just became transfixed. And I went, look at that impulse of life to thrive. In the middle of this little crack in the cement, life is forming itself. And I just kept watching that and feeling that vibration of life being for good. And I just remember sitting there telling myself, God is only for good. And so I surrender any ideas, any ideas that are preventing me from seeing the solution. The solution is there in the mind of God. I surrender any ideas that are preventing me from seeing it. Very shortly after that, an agency recommended a facility to me. They had a private room. It was affordable. It was, we were living in West Hollywood at the time, my partner Joe and I. It was West Hollywood adjacent. <clears throat> it had everything that I wanted. And I was so excited and I went to the place and I arrived there and it was dilapidated. <laughs> it did not look like the kind of place I wanted to put my mom in. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> and um, so I looked there. I went into the room, very discouraged, very disheartened. But somehow I said, don't shut the door. Be open, surrender to whatever is to be. And maybe this is just an exercise in getting information. And so I went into the room, and I remember looking and saying, I wonder if we could fix this up. And so I called upon our assistant minister at the time, Reverend Matt Comp. And I see I have a helper here <laughs> coming to give me some water. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> I don't know if that's going to help, but we'll try. <laughs> I surrender <clears throat> to whatever the solution is. Thank you, Dean. <clears throat> and so I'm standing there in the room with Reverend Matt, who came down. And he was getting all these ideas of what we could do to make this work. And at one point, he said, you need to paint the walls the color of butter. I don't know what it was about that. And he emphasized it can't be what a paint swatch would say is butter. He said it has to be the actual color of butter. But something shifted. I went to the elders. I said, OK, we'll take the room. We're going to give it a try. Next thing I, you know, I'm at Kuntz Hardware in West Hollywood with a little slab of butter wrapped in saran wrap at the paint department saying, quick, could you color match this before it melts? And the guy seemed totally unfazed by it. He did it. We went and we painted the room the color of butter. And from there, we were able to fix it up. <clears throat> it was cozy. So many people who came into that room afterwards just said how warm and how they felt the love of that place. 
My mom ended up loving that room. She was so surrounded and cared for with love. She became every staff member's mamacita. The owners made all kinds of exceptions for us for her to be happy in that place. And the biggest demonstration for me was when one day she looked at me as her time was approaching and she could sense it to make her transition, where she said, I hope I can be in my room when I go. And she got her wish with all of us around her. All of that from my willingness to surrender my ideas of what it should look like and to be open to seeing the solution that I couldn't previously see. So do we have to give up our affirmations and our aspirations toward good that we envision? Absolutely not. That's, again, a form of surrender of our limiting ideas. So we continue to perceive the possibilities. That's how we co-create with God. We get an idea. We pursue it. But along the way, we also need to be willing to surrender our ideas of what it should look like for something greater. If we become facile with both these aspects of surrender, then we more easily extricate ourselves from our human challenges, our human struggles, and move into the multitude experiences of goodness and bliss that God holds for all of us. Let's pray. And so we turn our attention inward, absolutely knowing that that one power, that one life, that one infinite invisible that we call God, the all-lovingness, the infinite intelligence, the infinite creativity out of which everything comes into being, is the life of all. That God is fully and equally present in, around, and through each and every one of us. And so I know as we gather today, exploring this idea of surrender and surrendering into bliss, where there's any need to release ideas of this just can't be, I'll never experience that, it's not possible, that we surrender those ideas, we let them go, and we open ourselves to the multitude of ways that the divine shows up and provides for our needs and that these dreams are realized and where the ideas that we hold are limited, where it's our time to open up and say, this or something greater, maybe there's something yet I do not see. We surrender our need to have it a certain way and we open to that love intelligence that shows us the way into our love, into our greater health, into our greater wholeness, into our joy, our financial abundance, our good and bliss in every way we can experience it. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. I know we are absolutely blessed in coming together today that healing and revealing has occurred in our time together. And so great, great thanks for the good that God is always. I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. I surrender any need to make it a certain way or to say it's not possible. And it comes forth. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. So we're going to sing one time. And so let us hold our hands to our hearts as we set our intentions for giving. 
and say together, from the love of pure spirit, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <sighs> Our thanks today, of course, to Sam and, and to Mary. Oh, if you want to get Mary's mu music, you have the opportunity to communicate with Mary directly by going to her email, which is M-A-R-H-Y-L-C at 
AOL.com. So that's M-A-R-H-Y-L-C at AOL.com. Our, uh, our announcements for today will always start with thank yous. So thank you so much to our deeply creative musical team, Sam Krieger and Karen Smith. You're just marvelous, and we're so blessed to have you. Thank you, of course, to Mary Hyland for her magnificent music, as always. Thank you to Tim Armstrong in the sound booth. So he's here in the sanctuary on sound, and also in the sanctuary, we have our whole perfect and complete digital media team. Here we've got Doreen Remo. Thank you, Doreen. And Terry Prince. Thank you, Terry. And of course, our courageous board president, Blair Thompson. <laughs> Yay, Blair! And on Facebook, Miss E. Ariano is uh, supporting us on Facebook. And on Zoom today, we have Mark Crowell, Brenda Jordan, and Ray Regan. <laughs> Yeehaw! Thank you. Of course, now uh, tithing donations, if you will, are available to be taken over the phone for 30 minutes after the service. So you would call 818-762-7566 and uh, you can donate that way. You can also go to the internet, surprise, surprise, at nhcrs.org forward slash give. And okay, this way is easy. My mom, who a lot of you know is 95, just did this the other day. She texted her tithing, um, and you send the word give to, you text the word give to 818-457-3419. You give it some information the first time, and then every time after that, it's just so easy and, and blessed. So you can uh, tithe in that way. Um, and of course, you can send your checks in as you usually do. Fabulous, please. Um, after the service, prayer with a practitioner, do avail yourself of this blessed gift that our practitioner corps gives after our Sunday and Wednesday services. You can have what we delightfully call a minute miracle with a practitioner go into that quiet sanctuary with them and experience and express the gift of prayer. Also, prayer-wise, you can send an email prayer request here to the church at prayer at nhcrs.org. So that's prayer at nhcrs.org. Send a prayer request to the, the church. You can also call in to our church number, again, that 818-762-7566, and press option four, and you can leave a voicemail where you can request prayer. And all of those prayers are collected and distributed to our licensed practitioner corps, and they hold you in love and consciousness for instantaneous healing. Coming up this Wednesday, it's Taze time, March 3rd, this Wednesday, meditation begins at 6.50 p.m. with the service beginning at 7 p.m. Join us this week for our Taze service. The evening will begin with a musical meditation followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien and joined by Reverend Mark Lapontz, facilitating an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. Avail yourself of that marvelous service of peace. Grief support group on Zoom. This group is facilitated by practitioner Carol Winokur, and it meets today on Zoom at 1 p.m. All are welcome. NHCRS spring concert on Zoom is Friday, March the 12th at 7.30 p.m. Join us for a wonderful evening of song and celebration with sensational soloists Bill A. Jones, and our very own Reverend Sidney Lehman. St I'm sorry, Reverend Sid Sidney Lehman Steen. Three words. Find out all the details and get your tickets on our website. Go to the main page, nhcrs.org. All the information is right there down at the bottom. Buy your tickets. Show up and enjoy. Uh, of course, Zoom virtual patio. Before and after Sunday and Wednesday services, you can gather with your beloved community to kibitz and enjoy one another, uh, share ideas, and hear some of the things that are going on. Uh, we will have virtual patio after the service. Reverend Mark will be joining us there, um, and you never know who's going to show up. Men's group, this group meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. on Zoom. So this Sunday, yes. Zoom meditation is every morning. Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Of course, 
all of this information of how to do these things is at our website, nhcrs.org. So uh, you can obtain your Zoom links there and further information about all of our events and sign up for our weekly email blasts and our monthly newsletters. So that's all the news that's fit to print. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's all sing together our, our beautiful peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank mm -hmm. you.